So let's consider this equation. It's negative 2x plus 3. y equals negative 2x plus 3. And let's think about um, if we were to, quote, solve this, what is its solution? Um, think of, you know, if we were in class, I'd be asking those questions, blah, 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 and field information. But um, how about this guy? y equals x squared plus 7x minus 2. What would its solution look like? I mean, we're talking about, hey, the solution to that is 3 or 5.2. Uh, so, no, no, we're not talking about a solution that looks like that at all. All right? Uh, if we were, how many solutions are there? And so, we'll go back to this guy, and let's first think about is let's say a 2 comma negative 1 a is a a solution so I'm asking you that question so how do we go about figuring out you should hit pause now and figure out if it is a solution or not and we will do the following so to figure out if it's a solution you take this of course is the x value x coordinate and this is the y coordinate and they correspond to these values in the equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, you can do two things, a number of different things. One, but I'm going to just take this 2 for x and substitute it in here. And see, when I calculate this, do I get the y that supposedly maps, I'll say that again, so that supposedly maps to that x value. So the x value of 2 y equal to negative 1 maps to x equals 2. And so yes, this is a solution to that equation. And to answer the earlier question, there are more than one solution. Uh, let's ask the same question. Is b, the point 4 comma 7, a solution? And so uh, again, hit pause, figure it out. Uh, I'll do it the other way. I'll substitute 7 in and the 4 in, and it, it amounts to the same math. Was that plus 3? And see if we get an, an equation that's a true statement. 7 equals, what's that, negative 8 plus 3, and we get 7 equals 5, and no, that is not true. So, no, 4 comma 7 is not a solution to that equation. So I'll ask the question again. How many solutions are there? How many solutions are there for that equation y equals negative 2x plus 3? Now, hopefully, you said infinitely many. Infinitely many solutions. How can we represent that infinitely many solutions, that set? Well, one way to do it is y equals negative 2x plus 3. Is that what it was? Yeah. That is one way to represent that set of values, that set of pairs or solutions in the form of x comma y, a, co a uh, coordinate pair. Another way to represent that is a t-chart. So um, this goes way back, right? You can either write it as x, y, or you can write it as x, and then the y is equal to 2x plus 3. So if I put, uh, what was it, 2? In here, what am I going to get for y? I'm going to get negative 1. If I put, let's see what the rate, the, the solution was for that one. What was it, 4? If I put 4 in for x, I'm going to get, uh, what was it, 5, not 7. And if we represented it over here, same thing, right? And so uh, how about if I did the following? Uh, oh, and then you can represent them as a t-chart, but could you... Could you actually represent all of the solutions, all of the x's and all the y's that map to those x's? If you thought you could, you would be here for quite a long time because remember, there's infinitely many, right? There's an infinite number of solutions. So another way to better represent what's going on is to represent that information as a graph. So let's plot those two points. What, 2, negative 1, and 4, 5? 2, negative 1 and 4 comma 5. 
That doesn't make sense any, at all. Why am I getting four comma five? Oh, it's four negative five. Oops, error. That should be a negative five. And so this should be a negative five. And so that makes more sense. Uh, so four negative five. Four, two, four, five. So it's that guy. And so we go back to geometry. How many points do you need to define a line? Two. So you just need two. So if you recognize that this equation is a line, you need to just determine two different points. And then you'll have the representation of all of the solutions to that linear equation. Uh, da, 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 da. So lastly, I think, we're going to talk about possibly an easier way. Um, this was a, a two different pairs that we were working with. Let's think about an easier way to do this. Let's just make one up. Uh, y equals, let's make it this way, 3y equals 2x minus 5. Right? So you could do some algebra and divide both sides by 3 and do all that kind of crazy stuff. But we can deal with this situation. An easy number to substitute and get the y that maps to it is x equals 0. So if I put a 0 in for x, what happens to uh, that term? It goes to 0, correct? And so what do we get for our y value? We get negative 5 thirds. Because I'm going to divide both sides by 3, that's gone. And so I have negative 5 thirds. And then another point that we could easily determine, because the number 0 is easy to work with, is so what if I put a 0 in for y? If I put a 0 in for y, this whole thing goes away. And I'm going to add 5 to both sides and divide both sides by 2. So I'm going to get it 5 halves. So this being a different equation, of course, we're going to get a different graph. And we're going to plot the points 0 on the x and negative 5 thirds. So that's, let's say that uh, each one of these segments is a third. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 thirds, negative 5 thirds. So let's do pink. That's that guy. And then uh, if I plotted 5 halves, so that's going to be crazy, 5 halves. Uh, if this is a, th uh, phew, let's just say that this is 5 halves. Right. And then if we plot that point, we'll go with that pink again. And if we draw that line, some representation of that line, this is uh, 3y equals 2x minus 5. And so there's a representation of all of the solutions for that equation. This, this information right here uh, is referred to as the following. Or right, let's do it from here. This is the x-intercept. And this is the y-intercept. By definition, we're talking about where does the line or the curve or the graph intercept the x-axis? That's the x-intercept. Where does it intercept or intersect the y-axis? That's the y-intercept. And what is the value of uh, excuse me, what is the value of y at the x-intercept? The value of y at the x-intercept is 0. What is the value of x at the y-intercept? It is 0. So simply, I write these out and then just substitute and do a little algebra. So there's a little review of equations and graphs and solutions of graphs.